So in the Rokio algorithm, what we have done is basically <coughs> we have considered the uh, we have considered the centroid of the known relevant document. We have considered the centroid of the known non-relevant document, and we have basically modified the query based on their difference. So this was the centroid of relevant document. If we considered an epsilon neighborhood around the centroid of the only the relevant set of documents, it might be the case that we'll be ending up with some selection of some non-relevant document inside this epsilon neighborhood as well. So considering this kind of a scenario, uh, what we'll be doing what this Rokio algorithm is doing is basically it is considering the centroid of the set of non relevant document as well. Then it basically subtracts both these centroids. And at the end, we'll be getting this as a resultant vector. So note that everything is vectored here. So every point here is basically a vector uh, in, the, in this vector space, two-dimensional, let's say. This is the centroid of the non-relevant set of documents. This is the set of this is the centroid of the relevant set of documents, this zero and this cross. After performing this subtraction uh, from the centroid of the non-relevant document, uh, subtracting the centroid of the known non-relevant document, this will be the vector. Now, if we consider this as the new optimized or optimal query, and again, if we consider again an epsilon neighborhood, you can see that earlier, the I mean, considering the length of the, uh, the, the radius of the circle, I mean, considering a small radius also, we are seeing that some non-relevant documents are coming into the epsilon neighborhood, right? But here, after considering this subtraction and for, for, um, after considering this uh, subtracted vector as the new optimized query, you can see that the radius here has increased of this epsilon neighborhood. Basically, we are considering a higher value of epsilon here. Still, we are not actually including any non-relevant document inside this vector space. This is just a two, two I mean, just a, an illustration of the whole scenario in two dimension. Of course, in multi-dimension, as we have seen, for vector space model, it cannot be actually visualized this much easily, but the underlying algorithm or underlying way of handling the things will be remaining the same. Again, we'll be considering the set of non-relevant documents, set of non-relevant non documents, we'll be considering their centroids, we'll be basically subtracting the centroid to get the optimized query vector. So, the, now if we consider, so we started with some Q. We don't know where that Q was lying here. Expected that Q was lying somewhere here. Because this document, this set of documents, and this set of documents are both known, uh, I mean, known uh, judge documents. So as we have seen, in order to perform or in order to get this kind of a relevance feedback, we need to get the first phase retrieval done. Now, if we consider the first phase retrieval is performed using a vector space model retrieval uh, technique, then the query vector, the initial query vector must be somewhere in between this, in between these two sets. Then only we know that vector space retrieval model is basically considers their distance based on that angle, the cosine angle, the cosine of the angle. And that's why we are getting this. 
now in this formulation of this optimized query there is no factor of q as you can see what are the factors basically what we are doing is we are considering this as the uh, let's use the same color as the definition uh, as the equation that i will, am using so this is the basically the mu of r that is basically a vector as you can see this is just a vector and uh, this is basically mu of nr again this is another vector okay now how we are actually getting this vector basically by subtracting or by adding the difference between the relevance vector uh, vector of the centroid of the relevance set vector of the centroid of the relevance set here it is the vector of the centroid mu of the non relevance set after performing their uh, i mean uh, subtraction what we are getting is we are basically getting this vector isn't it the final optimized vector we are getting by adding this relevance vector with this difference vector as well so from the vectors notation q opt or the vector associated with the optimized query is centroid basically vector of the centroid of the known relevant document plus difference between the centroid of the known relevant document and centroid of the known non relevant document but still note that we are not using q any 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 i mean q in any form directly in this equation now we can understand from the discussion that these documents are basically selected based on this q if we consider a relevance feedback where after performing an initial retrieval we are marking a set of top relevant documents as relevant and non relevant relevant and non relevant based on which we are actually performing this optimization calculation uh, this uh, this um, centroid calculation and based on that we are calculating this optimized query so although there is no indirect factor of q here this the selection of dr and dnr is based on q now another way of selecting dr and dnr is basically looking through I mean, without performing a retrieval at all in the beginning just looking through some random documents in the set in the uh, in the uh, collection and marking some of the documents as relevant and some of the documents as non relevant what can be a, a possible problem with that i'll be requesting you to think of, think uh, regarding that a little bit so again the scenario what i am saying is here i am saying that dr and dnr is basically a set of from the set of top retrieved documents with q i am marking some of the documents as relevant some of the documents as non relevant and based on that this is basically contributing to dr this is contributing to dr this is contributing to dnr and these two are also contributing to dnr now what i am saying is instead of performing this initial retrieval what if we select some random document from the collection select some random document without performing this initial retrieval this is basically after performing init retrieval initial retrieval we are marking this document as relevant and non relevant here instead of performing this initial retrieval what we are doing is from the corpus we are randomly selecting some relevant we are randomly selecting some documents say d1 d2 d3 and so on and we are marking their relevance and based on which we are basically computing this so what can be 
possible issue with this scenario. Please think a bit. Uh, think uh, what will be the possible sorry, uh, what will be the possible issue with this on your own. So now considering the documents vectors point of view. So remember in the vector space model, what we have done is we have uh, denoted or represented each document in the collection as a vector in an abstract vector space, isn't it? So all the documents are basically some vectors. Here, are basically some points in this vector space, abstract vector space. So in order to compute the centroid, so basically mu is mu of some m is basically indicating the centroid of the set of points m. So in order to con con I mean, consider the centroid from the relevance, from, from the uh, points point of view, here the documents are basically points. So how we can compute that is basically using just, I mean, just summing over or averaging over all the vectors for all the documents divided by the number of relevant, the number of documents in the known relevant set. Plus the same thing, this, these two are the same, the mu of dr, this is basically the mu of dnr, where this is basically the number of non-relevant document marked non-relevant document and for each document in this non uh, marked non-relevant document we are basically summing their vectors this is just a simple way of getting the centroid an un unweighted uh, way of getting the centroid of a set of points in the vector space now the what we are essentially doing again we are basically moving the centroid of the relevant document by the difference between the two centroids, right? Now, this is practically what we will be, uh, th this is theoretically what the Rokio algorithm is stating us to do. But again, note that there is no direct presence of Q here. These are indirectly uh, based on uh, basically this Q, basically the set of PR and DNR, they are selected based on Q, but there is no direct involvement of Q in this equation. <clears throat> so practically what we'll be doing is, instead of considering the moving, so here we are basically moving the so in front of the relevant document, we are moving based on the difference. So practically what we'll be doing is in order to directly uh, involve this Q, so remember that in the vector space retrieval model in the VSM, all the documents are basically some uh, points here and the query is also a point here. The query is also represented as a point here, but still we are not using it anywhere here. So instead, practically what we'll be doing is instead of moving this relevant, the centroid of the relevant document, uh, what we'll be doing is we'll be basically moving the query vector. So again, I'm repeating instead of moving the centroid of the relevant document will be moving the query vector. Why? One reason is there can be different types of relevant documents for a given query. Although it is expected that all of them will be topically related to Q, but it can be the case that the documents are say multi-topical and their vectors are actually spreaded across multiple spaces, I mean, spreaded across the vector space. So, 
as we are considering only so here here is here is what here is basically a set of rail docks of q isn't it so if we consider this as the collection maybe this is dr but it is a set of all the relevant documents it might be the case that uh, it might be the case that the total or the other relevant other relevant document of q is actually spread it here as well okay just give me a minute Sorry for that. I uh, I had a important call just to listen. Yes. So here in this model, what we are doing is we are not directly using this Q anywhere. But instead, what we are doing is we are only considering the set of relevant documents. It might be the case that this set, the 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 uh, I mean the super set, is actually containing some other document. Which is a little bit different from this set of documents. So this is basically it can be the case that this is a this is basically a biased selection. It can be the case, but all these documents are related to this query vector, isn't it? The skew vector. So instead of moving the centroid of this set of relevant documents, what will will be practically will be doing is we will be basically moving the vector of the query. 